The Streets of San Francisco, a popular TV show from 1972, takes viewers through the exciting and diverse city of San Francisco. This isn't just any police drama, it's a mix of interesting crime stories and the development of its characters. The show, starring Carl Malden and Michael Douglas, really showcases what San Francisco was like in the 1970s with its engaging plots and unforgettable characters. Think back to when you first started watching this show. Was there a specific scene or moment that really stuck with you? The show has many funny, surprising, and sad moments that people still talk about. We'd also like to hear about your favorite memory or personal story related to this show. Please share your thoughts and memories in the comments. We're excited to hear them. Let's look back at this memorable series and talk about how it has stayed with us, both in terms of the show itself and in our own lives. The Streets of San Francisco, a television series from the early 1970s, stands out for its unique blend of elements that echo the vibe of the Dirty Harry movies. Its portrayal of San Francisco, coupled with dynamic action, a compelling musical score, and striking photography, contribute to its engaging nature. Carl Malden's performance adds a layer of toughness to the series reminiscent of the era's cinematic style. Contrary to some opinions, the final season of the show marks a significant evolution in its narrative complexity and entertainment value. Richard Hatch's addition as a more subdued partner for Stone offers a fresh dynamic differing from Michael Douglas's portrayal, which some viewers found less convincing in the role of a police officer. This change in the cast in the final season brings a new dimension to the series. The show is enjoyable for repeated viewing, thanks to its robust scenes, well-crafted screenplays, and strong performances. The chemistry between the Stonkler duo, particularly before Michael Douglas's departure in 1976, is a highlight of the series. It holds a distinguished place among television crime dramas of the past few decades, alongside other notable shows like Cannon, Petrocelli, Vegas, Magnum, Miami Vice, Jack and the Fat Man, and Nash Bridges, all of which have contributed significantly to making television viewing a pleasurable experience. In summary, The Streets of San Francisco offers a unique viewing experience that blends the gritty charm of 1970s San Francisco with engaging storytelling and character dynamics. Its place in the pantheon of classic television crime dramas is well-deserved, making it a recommended watch for enthusiasts of the genre. Carl Malden and Michael Douglas, key actors in this crime drama, developed a deep bond during their time on the show. This relationship was evident when, two decades after their last episode together, they shared the stage at the 1996 People's Choice Awards. Malden expressed his fondness for Douglas, likening him to a son he never had. He disclosed his initial desire for producer Quinn Martin to include Douglas in the cast. In response, Douglas acknowledged Malden as his mentor, underlining the mutual respect and enjoyment they experienced while working on the series. This show was notable for its authentic filming in San Francisco, California. Produced by Quinn Martin Productions, its first season saw collaboration with Warner Brothers Television. This choice of location added a layer of realism to the series, immersing viewers in the actual streets and atmosphere of San Francisco. An interesting aspect of the series was its depiction of police ranks, specifically the rank of inspector. In the San Francisco Police Department, an inspector is equivalent to a detective, a fact that differs from other departments where the rank signifies a higher position. This distinction in ranks provided a more nuanced understanding of the law enforcement hierarchy in San Francisco during that era. Carl Malden's close friendship with Kirk Douglas, Michael Douglas' father, played a significant role in the casting for this series. This connection led to Malden's involvement, and in a strategic move by producer Quinn Martin, Michael Douglas was brought on board for the role of Inspector Steve Keller. This decision not only leveraged the Douglas family's reputation in Hollywood, but also created a compelling on-screen dynamic between Malden and the younger Douglas. The show's partnership with Ford Motor Company significantly influenced its visual appeal. Ford's sponsorship meant that the series prominently featured the latest Ford models, adding a sense of realism and modernity to the show's setting. Specifically, the main characters initially drove a brown 1971 Ford Galaxy four-door sedan, a choice that reflected the era's automotive trends. Moreover, the San Francisco Police Department's fleet in the show consisted entirely of Ford Galaxies, further emphasizing Ford's role in shaping the series' aesthetic. 
This interplay of personal relationships, casting decisions, and corporate sponsorships contributed to the show's authenticity and appeal. The involvement of real-life connections and contemporary vehicles not only grounded the series in its era, but also added layers of interest for the audience. These elements, combined with the show's gripping narratives and character development, solidified its position as a memorable and influential piece of television history. In the show, the inspector's mode of transportation was distinct and notable. They used an unmarked Ford sedan, which was equipped with a single revolving red light for emergencies. This setup differed from the actual San Francisco Police Department vehicles of that time, which used a red spotlight attached to the windshield. This difference, although subtle, showcased the show's blend of reality with creative elements for dramatic effect. The series made its debut in the United Kingdom on 19 November 1973, extending its influence beyond American audiences. Its arrival in the UK marked a significant expansion of its international viewership, indicating its appeal to a broader audience fascinated by American police dramas and the allure of San Francisco. An interesting aspect of the show's inception was its beginning with a pilot movie, airing a week before the official series launch. Edward Hume, who wrote the pilot's teleplay, was instrumental in developing the series. He based it on characters from a novel by Weston, providing a literary foundation that enriched the show's narrative depth. These elements, from the distinctive use of vehicles to its international reach and literary origins, played a key role in shaping the show's unique character and appeal. Such details not only provided authenticity to the series, but also contributed to its distinct place in television history. The international adaptation of the series saw interesting changes, especially in West Germany, where the character of Steve Keller had to be renamed to Steve Heller. This was due to the presence of a character named Commissar Keller in a West German TV show, thus avoiding confusion among the German audience. Another fascinating aspect is the connection of this series to a film released two decades prior, also named Streets of San Francisco. This earlier film was centered around a veteran police detective working to guide a young person at risk, setting a thematic precedent for the TV series. A unique tidbit about the series involves the famous singer Elvis Presley. He reportedly never watched it because Carl Malden's character, Mike Stone, shared a name with the man involved in an affair with his wife, Priscilla Presley. This personal connection to the character's name deterred Presley from engaging with the show. These facts highlight how the series was not just a product of its script and performances, but also how it interacted with and was influenced by the wider cultural and social landscape of the time. Michael Douglas, who played a leading role in the series, shared with Photoplay magazine his expectations about his character's departure. In 1976, when he left the show, he anticipated a dramatic exit for his character, envisaging a poignant death scene. However, the series took a different route, with his character instead choosing a career in teaching. This unexpected twist in character arc reflects the show's ability to keep its audience engaged with unpredictable plot developments. When the series first aired, it faced stiff competition from established sitcoms like The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Bob Newhart Show. However, its initial success on Saturday nights led to a strategic move to Thursday evenings. This shift placed it amidst the era's popular crime dramas, though in varying time slots. The move not only signaled the show's rising popularity, but also its ability to hold its own against other primetime offerings. A notable aspect of the series was its filming approach. Unlike many TV productions of later generations, the series strove to blend into the real-life setting of San Francisco. Almost entirely shot on location, it provided viewers an immersive experience of the city. The show utilized a converted warehouse on Kearney Street for interior scenes, a site that remains standing today. This commitment to authentic filming locations added a layer of realism to the series, enhancing the viewing experience by showcasing the actual streets and culture of San Francisco during the 1970s. In conclusion, the series not only provided captivating crime stories and character developments, but also managed to integrate itself into the real-life environment of San Francisco. This approach, coupled with strategic broadcasting decisions and unexpected plot twists, contributed to its success and lasting appeal, 